Oh boy, do we have a controversial video today? I'm gonna talk about BFA. Wait, this is controversial now? I don't well, know damn. about that. I look away for one second and the sky starts falling. Literally. Did you guys know that Blizzard is awful, the game sucks, and if you like it, you're a mindless fake fanboy shill, true. not a true OG gamer. And at the same time, those people are just whiners. Big true. They should just quit, and how dare they be critical of the game. That's right. Streamers are angry, YouTubers are angry, the players are angry, everyone's angry. It's one of those old MTV reality TV shows where everyone's screaming at each other and pulling out each other's- Yo, I love this fight. This is one of my favorite fights on the whole internet. This dude is just sitting there ordering Taco Bell. Everything else in the world is going along as planned. And you have those two girls in the background just beating the shit out of each other, wrestling around on the pavement. And everybody else just walks by like it's not even happening. Sweets. Uh, I think original chicken. Look at that drink, dude. As for myself, my spirit animal is the guy in the background eating Taco Bell, watching it all transpire. Okay. I haven't really I like shared that. my opinion yet, because I think these videos are all over the place. And I've just had other things I wanted to do. But people have asked here and there about my thoughts on BFA, so I think it's time. And just to throw this out there, this is all just my opinion, and if you disagree with what's said in this video, that's fine. Then fuck you! Then you're wrong! I'm not trying to sway anyone in any direction. I'm just sharing my honest thoughts and impressions of the expansion so far. This isn't coming from someone who plays 14 hours a day and complains what that there's nerd, nothing dude. to do. Nor from someone who plays once a week and he has no play idea what's going hours on. A day. I've always considered myself the pretty average everyday player in this game, aside from vanilla back when I played way too much. The These good days, days, I play every other day, and rating-wise, the most I'll do is heroic. Expanding on that though, I definitely haven't played BFA as much as I did Legion. In Legion, I was online pretty much every day, and Good. running mythics left and right, Good. leveling new alts, and much more active in raiding, and so on. I think that's because A, I really loved Legion. After the disaster that was Draenor, I thought it really revitalized the game, and it brought so many new features to the table. I liked the story, most of the raids, the dungeons, the artifacts, pretty much everything about it. Okay. BFA, however, I've had less playtime in, I think simply due to its new main features, which are Warfronts, Expeditions, and Azerite Armor, just haven't felt as fun to me compared to what Legion brought to the table. I don't Warfronts, Azerite Armor, and Islands. You know what really disappoints me about all of this? Like, I think islands have really big potential. And I think warfronts have even bigger potential. Azerite armor, I think, also has potential. Like, th these things do have really big potential. Like, it, it's, I, I hope that he talks about this in a video. It's, it's not necessarily the, the features itself, but the implementation of the features that, that's the problem. I think BFA as a whole is terrible or unfun. I still have fun running mythics, and I think the raids are great so far. And I've actually delved into PvP a bit this expansion, which Big is mistake. something I've neglected since Cataclysm. Overall, so far I'd say it's an average expansion, but therein lies the problem. World of Warcraft is the first thing that comes to mind when someone says MMO. We hold the game to the incredible standards that we know Blizzard is capable of, yet it's received a lukewarm reception at best because it's very average. I would argue that BFA is not average. I, I think that's vastly below average uh, in a lot of ways, right? Like the, like all the new features are boring, right? I mean, there, there's the, the, basically like, here's why I think all the features are boring is because the outcome of the game is predetermined. You already know what's going to happen. So like as a Warfront, here's something I want to do on stream, okay? And I want to do this as a stream event where we go and we do this all together. I want to make a pre-made Warfront and have everybody queue up at the same time. And I want to try to intentionally lose the Warfront. I want to see if it's possible to lose a Warfront. Like we're all going to get together 
and do you know what maybe we can do it after this i i don't know like i think it'd be fucking hilarious you can lose i i want to see it happen i really do it, it's gonna be like uh witnessing a unicorn like very few people see them it happens but it, it's very uncommon So that's the too long didn't watch of it. I do want to go into more detail though, and explain exactly why I feel this way. And the main way I want to express that is just by going over those major features one by one. What does this expansion bring to the table that's different from the others? And after that, we'll just talk about it as an MMORPG as a whole. This video was made in April of 2019, so about 8 months into the expansion, just after 8.1.5, so this is before the upcoming Crucible of Storms. It's crazy to think the expansion's been out for eight months. Rates. Eight so fucking months. So I think months. one of the main problems that everyone has right now is that it simply boils down to it's very similar to Legion gameplay-wise. What you grind, well, it's how worse. you grind, your daily itinerary, it's all very reminiscent of the Legion expansion. And the new features I just mentioned have fallen short in a lot of ways. To really yeah. get my point across here, I think it's appropriate to draw comparisons to Legion, since it's the direct previous expansion. As I said, I loved it. Remember the core of the stars? Introduced Mythic Plus. That was and good. Five men content to the end game challenge wise. World quests are a much better alternative to that old daily quest hub system. No, that, that shit was so good back in Legion. Why like you would go over to a world quest and you'd fucking grab all the mobs, AOE them down, and you're done. It was so, like, being able to complete a world quest in one cast felt so fucking good. Or one pull, I loved it. Like, I remember the the Stormheim world quests were the best to do. I, I, I enjoyed them so much. They had, the zones were good. I personally liked artifact weapons because they gave you another form of character progression and a long-term goal to work towards. Hardly. Like I said, Maybe at the, beginning the story of the was expansion. interesting to me, and most of the raids were great. And the dungeons the were designed knowledge well, just and ruined fun it. to play. They shouldn't and have had artifact knowledge. Although they had their flaws they just made and their method wide. of obtainment, I thought that their various unique perks that they gave added depth to the classes. There were so many great new features that really turned the game around. A huge improvement over Draenor. Fucking although that's yeah, pretty dude, easy the mage to do, tower, right? I loved it. Here comes BFA though, with all of those huge new features from Legion. What great heights will this one take us to? With artifacts disappearing, we have the new Azerite system. Now, there are differences. You don't get every trait. Rather, you have to choose just one at each tier. I like that. You also have three pieces of armor that you can interchange instead of being stuck with just your weapon, with each armor having different combinations of traits. I want to say that I think that by the end of BFA, Azerite armor is actually going to be good. And then they'll delete it. for each of your specs but even with this at the end of the day it boils down to you collect artifact power to level up your amulet which in turn lets you pick more traits for your gear which is what we had in Legion. amazing it's not the exact same system but yeah, it, it is. is very similar just dressed up a bit different yeah, which a lot of people don't like i think Personally, that itself doesn't bother me yeah it's bother me I either. don't like about azurite armor wait is that what the fuck why does he have that water there is from Burning Crusade, isn't it? Like, am I wrong there, or is there, like, a new model? No, it's not? Okay, well, it looks exactly the same. Bother me. What I don't like about Azerite armor Sorry, is I never lose traits mana. are pretty boring, so I play a man -like and they aren't like enough for what they replaced. At BlizzCon 2017, they were hyped up to be these game-changing traits similar to talents, where they heavily alter your playstyle. Some do. Each piece of armor, Some do. in a handful of slots that we select, we currently have here. three in mind, will offer a potential for customization and choice in a handcrafted way. These are not random traits, unlike the Netherlight Crucible. A helm is a helm is a helm, and you can pick what you want to suit your playstyle, to suit your needs there as you is. progress through the world. So, maybe if you have this trait, you can stand in the fire a bit longer and heal the tank. Or maybe this one makes you more mobile. But what we got were basically a bunch of inconsequential passives. Increase some secondary stat for 10 seconds on this proc. 
chance to proc a bleed, chance to proc a heal. Secondaries, those are and beautiful. yes, even just straight up stat increases, if you can actually believe that. Amazing. You might find a power that makes you think twice about using a talent that you'd previously written off. No. And you will certainly find combinations that reinforce your favorite way to play your character. Okay. It all boils down to the problem that they've been having for 14 years back with the old talent tree. There's no real choice. There's cookie because cutters. There will yeah. always be a best. Yeah. And that's the case with these traits. They're so inconsequential that they really just boil down to another number. Like, oh snap, I procced Blightborn Infusion, guys. What am I going to do? Let well, me let me give you an example of something that is not like that. That I, I can tell that Blizzard is actually trying to improve this. So there's a there's a trait here for Fury Warriors. It's called Cold Steel Hot Blood. Now, if you have this trait, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it all the way, but like basically it makes your Bloodthirst crits uh, deal a lot of damage with like a bleed. If you have this trait, like 3x, you want to have crit on all your gear. So there actually is an example of Blizzard having the Azerite armor change your play style and the way that you play your character, which is amazing. Like, this is what we've all been waiting for and all wanted. So I, 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 I it, it's absolutely possible. And there is an example of it happening. Well, One trait. Nothing. Well, it's a good fucking start. Okay? It's a good start since it's just another one of the dozens of proc-based stat increases. Again, for the most part, there are a few here and there that do actually change what you do. They're extremely limited, though. In fact, the only one I can think of off the top of my head is the Seductive Power trait, where you have to run to Bwamsamdi's Spirit to get a stacking buff. Although it is minor, this actually has some consequence with your gameplay. But again, it's so few and far between that your decision 99% really of the cool. time I like that. is based off of the highest number in a spreadsheet. The scenario is, which one is higher? Started eight months oh, okay, yeah. I'll pick that one, rather than what it should be and what was promised, and that's, which one is more fun or better fits my play style? And another issue if it's is more fun, you'll play the game longer. So the longer it takes you, the more fun it is. Artifacts were hugely impactful in Legion, game-changing in fact. In the beginning of Legion, as you may remember, we had a huge pruning of abilities. Skills or passives that were deemed unfit for class fantasy were removed or just restricted to one specialization of the class, leaving things much more simple in comparison to Draenor. With the introduction of artifacts though, a lot of these gaps were filled with <sighs> new traits, passives, and even abilities that made the class feel more whole. I'll agree with that. However, as I mentioned, we lost artifacts in BFA. Yep. and they're basically replaced with Azerite armor. Some, not all, of the old abilities were instead thrown into the talent tree as an option against existing talents. Some of them, but everything not all. else, gone. Rip Odin's For the Fury. most part, there are some exceptions, but overall, our net gain from Draenor to BFA is negative. So, you have this big void left, and the system yeah. that was supposed to fill it in has fallen short in many people's eyes. A problem made worse with the fact that there are no tier sets in BFA because of Azerite armor. Just another casualty of the system. As stated by Ian Hezekostis in a November 2017 interview. Tier sets of course need the head, shoulders, and chest, but since those slots are filled by Azerite armor, they just decided to do away with them, citing that people would get their customization through the Azerite armor. The last- This is what I think they should do. So they can just add new equipment slots. Like they need a class specific equipment slot. So like uh, like warriors could have like a drinking horn, uh, or like uh, I don't know like a sheath for their weapon. Uh, paladins could have a libram again. Uh, DKs have their sigils back. Uh, mages have uh, you know like a spell book, and like these different things like you can empower, and that way like it won't cannibalize the current uh, the, the current game. And they can just remove them without necessarily having to replace them if it doesn't work out in the next expansion. Like I, I don't know why. Yeah, hunters get yeah hunters get their either their staves or a quiver. Uh, demon hunters get like a I don't know like a chaos stone or something like that. I don't know. It's like a random like a soul stone. Demon hunters get a soul stone. Uh, the warlocks will get a fire stone or or a uh, or a spell stone depending on like what spec they are. Um, let's see. Rogues get poison vials. Uh, hunters, dru uh, druids would get, um, I don't know, like maybe, like maybe you'd have like a squirrel, 
Yeah, druids would have a squirrel that would just like follow them around and like empower their abilities. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Or you just give them a stick. Yeah, yeah. Her leaves. Yeah, just like throw leaves at them. That, that's always a good idea. Uh, let's see. What are the other classes? Monks? Who cares? Just delete those. Next expansion. Get that out of the way. Um, let's see. Druids. Yeah, they get a, yeah, they get a beer. That's perfect. Uh, what other good ideas would there be? Monks, druids, paladins, warriors, DKs, priests. Oh, priests? Um, they'd have a... Uh, I'd make that joke, but it is Easter, so, you know, we'll, we'll skip it. Either way, I, I just wish, yeah, shamans have totems, obviously. Um, yeah, good one, Emery. Good one. Uh, so, anyway, I, that's what they should do, is make a new equipment slot. Make multiple equipment slots. Make characters, like, give them more depth. More Let's things to collect. To filling the void left behind the removal of artifacts, gone. And not only that, but also the Legion Legendaries and are missing level 120 talent row. Yeah, Artifacts, missing is tier right. sets, legendary affixes, yep. new talents. Players have lost so much since Legion, and they've been replaced by uh, increase your mastery and leech. Even if it was perfectly designed, one system can't possibly emulate the customization, depth, and impact of four. And to add on to that, to start off, a lot of the good traits weren't even the class-specific ones, in general, I hate traits that are shared between the classes. Although it had its own flaws, I could see where they were coming from with the class fantasy uh, revolution during I, I don't mind them that much. classes and specializations I can stand see why he says that, other. though. Not just for the sake of making alts more interesting, but just for the sake of having something that no one else but your spec has. We have a whole ring that's dedicated to these generic traits for every single spec. Again, for how just big a of a deal... I'm gonna pause this real quick. Asmund doesn't raid, doesn't do Mythic Plus, doesn't even play WoW. What is important? Why is his opinion important again? Let me show you why. I played this game a thousand, thousand days. I probably have cutting edge on more raids than you've even been into. I think the bigger question is why don't I do those things anymore? Like, would you would 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 it be would you be happy if I went and I just got a plus fifteen done for every mythic dungeon? Would that magically give me uh, you know, the the ability to criticize them? If I did a plus twenty of every dungeon, like, do you want me to do that? Like. Is I, I can I can go I can just go do like a an eighteen or something of every dungeon, it'd be no big deal. Like a, a, and then would that magically like make my opinion better? I don't think so. You know what? You know what? Maybe we'll do that. Why don't I get a plus fifteen of every dungeon completed? I, I'll challenge myself to that. I'll tank it myself. And that way there's going to be no, like, possibility of me getting carried through with, like, DPS. Of course, I'm getting carried through with Thunderclap. But, hey, that's close enough. I'll do a plus 15 of every dungeon. And if I enjoy it and I have fun, maybe we'll move it up to, like, plus 20. You happy? Yeah. Okay. So, I, I mean, I'll do that instead. Yeah, it's going to be no big deal. Depleto God? No, I'm not going to deplete anything, dude. What happened to 20, 20, 18, and, and 15? Well, I'm just throwing out numbers, right? Like, the idea would be I'd probably do 15s first, and then if that went well and people, uh, you know, were like, damn, that's actually really cool, and, you know, whatever, and I enjoyed it, then maybe I'd move it up to 18s or 20s. And I said like 18s because I don't want to do a 20 shrine. <laughs> that's, that's basically why I, I said 18s. Okay, let me, let me keep going into the video. Deal that they made about class fantasy and legion, this really doesn't make sense to me. And speaking of this, expanding more in tier sets here, to a lot of people, these are the holy grail of raiding in World of Warcraft. One of the huge reasons that people raid to begin with is for the tier sets to have something to complete and to get those cool set bonuses to make their class more interesting or powerful. 
They're what separates Mythic Plus from Rating now, since yep. you can get pretty comparable eye levels from both. Especially if you don't count Mythic Rating, since I think like 2% of the population actually does that. And That's even a lot. more so, because Mythic Pluses are spammable. Yeah, why would you ever Mythic Raid? Forging, you really can't. Besides curate. for the mounts. Even Mythic Raids, if you do enough. It's grindy, yeah, but it's possible. Like I said, I think Mythic Pluses are great for the game, but in my opinion, rating should always be the mainstay, primary endgame for any MMO. And with no tier sets, that line between I raids and that. Mythic Plus becomes even more blurred. And that's not I even think rating should give the best the gear, period. Of it. Another reason why no way to get better gear than rating, but except for, for rating, maybe like gladiator level arena. And now we're left with this awkward system of sharing these quote sets of the same armor type. Every leatherware looks the same. I don't same, like not feeling like I have to raid. the same, and so on. Gee, for how big a deal they made about class fantasy during Legion with all of the pruning, this sure seems contradictory, doesn't it? Raise your hands. How many of you have actually seen the full Aldir or Dazzler lore sets on people? Everyone I know transmogs out of them, not because they're objectively I, I ugly, yeah, but have. rather because they're simply shared across every they're, armor They're type, really nice. So I mean, a lot of the new unique. sets are really nice. Or rather, they don't match their class. Yeah. Like, how does this look like a rogue? Or this a hunter? <laughs> Some Wait, people what? say that looks don't matter, but if that's the case, how about... Looks don't matter. What a fucking lie about that. Like, I mean... You really, you see this guy, Virosh the Horde Breaker in, in the city where he's wearing his fucking Antorus normal mode boots, shoulders, helmet, gloves, and chest piece there. And he's too fucking shitty to get the belt, so he's using the one from Heroic Ilganoth and Emerald Nightmare. This guy looks like a fucking clown. Nobody's going to want to play with him. All you have to do is look at him and you know he's an idiot. And he's got the Horde Breaker title on like it's 2013. It's just pathetic. Oh, we just have one armor set, so everyone looks the same. How about we're all just gray blobs with no distinguishable features? Why have separate classes? We should all just look the same and just have one ability. I'm obviously joking here, hey. but you have to oh, admit oh, that there is some on. truth to what I'm saying. There is value in straightforwardness, but sometimes I think they just take it way, way too far. Especially in an MMO setting where the whole genre is about that complexity and character progression. Change is inevitable. You can't reasonably expect a game to never evolve, but in my opinion, in certain aspects, it's done so in a destructive way. Evolution should be constructive, with more features and depth added, not taken away. I think the game has done a great job with this in areas like dungeons and raids. Huge improvements over the years, and when people trash BFA, they conveniently seem to never talk about these new raids and boss fights, which I think are Nobody well done. Nobody cares! Gone are the days of having five different salamander boss fights that are all slightly different from each other. <laughs> yeah, they all, if you combine all of the salamanders together, they make one trash mob from BFA in terms of mechanics. I mean, yes, obviously the boss fights back then were really bad. And I think that's really an interesting way to look at it, right? It's like, why do people have such fond memories of Molten Core? Uh, uh, basically a raid full of target dummies. And you can have Battle of the Tsar Lore, which is a very, very well-crafted, great raid, and people still complain about it and don't care. I, I mean, like, th think about, like, why that is. The latest one, as of this video, is the Battle of Dazzar Lore, and it's phenomenal. Yeah, the raids are great. The fights are so fun and unique, and it might be my favorite raid in the entire game. And for someone who's played since 2005, that's saying a whole hell of a lot. But where they have an A+, plus in the rating scene and dungeons, there has been some definite regression in a lot of the details, such as the lack of tier sets, or no new talents like I mentioned earlier. It feels like we're losing the RPG in MMORPG. It well, would be already unbelievable lost the MMO too. to remove tier sets from the games, say during the Wrath of the Lich King or Burning Crusade or whatever. But in today's climate, it's more acceptable since it's just another one of the many things that they've slowly whittled away. It's the little things that matter, and they all build on each other, and when you start slowly taking them out expansion by expansion, you start seeing the effect. Tier sets are just one of many victims, and it's all for the sake of a system that's been less than impressive from a design standpoint, from a character progression standpoint, and even from just a raw gameplay standpoint. And <laughs> what that's a not trait. even the end of it. They're still rebalancing these traits all the time, which Thankfully. is good. Which I mean, is very you're never good. Gonna get perfect balance, like I mentioned, 
but the bigger issue is that it creates situations like this. Since they change these traits so much, everyone hangs on to like 50 Azurite pieces, and each patch we go through them to see what's good yep. and what's bad this Look week. Look at mine. Sometimes, even if a piece is 30 eye levels under another piece, it's still better because it just has better traits in general, which should never be the case. So, those are my general thoughts on Azurite armor as a whole, I think. I wanted like to I talk said, about though, Warfronts. I want this video to be constructive. I really hope he talks about Warfronts. Credit where credit is due. They have been addressing the Azurite armor. They added another ring that has the class traits in their pool. They're doing better. Which gives a bit more added depth, and just having another layer is nice in general. Yeah. And they've also removed a lot of the boring or useless ones, and they even added a currency where you can buy specific pieces from any Mythic Plus dungeon. Tears coming back next expansion? They've also said well, I hope that so. they're looking to make substantial changes to the system as a whole in patch 8.2. As of this video, there's not a lot of detail, but they hinted that they're moving a lot of the power to the amulet itself, possibly bringing in active abilities, and overall making them more similar to the Legion artifacts. Let me ask you guys something. For, for those of you all that have played on PTR, like, how are the new changes to Heart of Azeroth? Because I haven't had a chance to do them. I, I want to do them on stream, but I've just been, like, doing other stuff instead. Meh, boring, good, pretty good, better. Okay, well, you know what? If it's, like, if it's my stream, and, like, my, my audience is probably, like, pretty critical to WoW, and if I'm getting, like, mostly people that are saying that it's either good or, like, unbalanced or whatever, like, that means they're pretty good. Yeah, I mean, that that's that's fine. If that's true, and we have something as substantial as active abilities, we'll finally have something closer to what was promised really good for rating in BlizzCon standpoint. 2017. Okay. But please, Blizzard, I beg of you, make these abilities spec-specific. A new poison for assassination rogues, Ooh. maybe a new demon for warlocks. Oh, wow. I don't know. It'll be hard to balance. But yeah, that would be really fucking cool. And tier sets, class identity is Holy something shit, that's regressed I never even so thought much. Of that. And this is your opportunity to address it. Yeah. If it's a generic, one spell fits all classes type of deal, I think it'll be following down the same path that led you to all of these problems to begin with. So, I'm hoping that all of these changes will be good. But like I said earlier, when you're trying to force one system to replace four, it's, it's an uphill battle to say it the least. It was way too much. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Island. Oh! This is the exciting part. But next, let's talk about another big Okay, yeah, this feature. is really exciting. And those are the island expeditions. Okay, here we go. I think these could also use some work. There are some good aspects to them. The advanced AI is really well done, I think. And they're all agnostic, as they should be. So they're easy to just hop in and do. Okay. Right now, the biggest problem is that the main thing they're banking on, which is it's a different experience each time, isn't really true. I mean, it's technically true. Technically, there are different mobs or chess placements each time. It's the same outcome. Or different quests or an opposing team and so on. But at the end of the day, they boil down to this. Rush to get X amount of Azerite before... Here's how they can make islands better. Remove PvE islands. Just take them out of the game. Just re remove them. Only PvP islands. Quadruple the rewards. And uh, I, I think that islands would actually be better. Give them an actual, like, a progression system. That's what I... That uh, You guys uh, you might disagree with me. Okay, that's fine. That's what I think they should do. PvE losers would cry. They're already crying. Or the enemy team does. What if you don't want to do PvP islands, though? Do you want to do PvE islands? You never really can stop to look around or notice any of the changes because you're just constantly rushing to go get Azerite. Even the different maps, because there's really no difference between them. A problem made by the randomness itself. Let me explain. Now, okay. some islands do have set enemies here and there, but a lot of them, such as the rares or invasions, are from a larger pool that are selected randomly. If 90% of the expeditions are random, what's the real difference between the maps? 
it's all just topography and aesthetics. Well, yeah, yeah, There's that that's okay. Instead of there, or maybe this rune is I, in that location. This and would it's matter in PvP. It would make a big difference right in now PvP. Are on these tropical islands. I know they're called uh, island expeditions, but one of the downsides is that there's not much variety in the setting. Yeah, there are certain spots where there's fire in the Molten K or the Foggy Rotting Mire, but these islands are varied enough themselves that they just sort of blend in together. They're just beating like, bots that no are programmed to lose. Map that's brimming with fire elementals Sounds exciting. or lava spewing everywhere or flame walls that you have to dodge. Instead, That'd be pretty cool. we have an island with some fire an island with some snow, and an island with some buildings, and so on. I think if the maps had more of an identity, you could maybe say that you get more variety between expeditions. Like, imagine if Mythic Plus Dungeons had a random assortment of enemies, random trash mobs, and in every boss room is a random boss from any of the 10 dungeons in BFA. Take that, and instead of each of these dungeons having these unique settings, just make them all take place on tropical islands. What's there to make you say that, Oh neat, a freehold key, that's my favorite one. Or, ugh, Shrine of the Storm, oh, forget that. True. If they're instead these ultra-random mishmashes, they wouldn't truly have anything that sets them apart from each other. When have you ever done an island expedition, and you went, Oh yeah, the Molten K baby, my favorite, yes. I actually do really like the snow one because you can aggro all the mobs and like pull them down to the bottom and like AOE them all down and do like the whole expedition in one pull. So like that, that's kind of true and kind of not true. So like, yeah, yeah, there, there's a few of them that I do like. But also like the, the, having like the gear and everything that was like tied to the different islands and like, oh, well, you can only get this type of like mount from like this, this island because it has like these mobs that are there uh, naturally. I, I thought that made it more interesting. Also, like, I, I don't know. I just think like their entire. I, I really think the only way they can make islands good content is if they remove the PVE component to them. Like, or they they remove PVE version islands, like to where you no longer play against bots. Like, it, it, just like no bots at all. Yeah, you know, only PVP islands. In my opinion, it results in them being kind of dull because once you've done one island expedition, you've pretty much done them all. Yep. I think if we maybe had something to anchor all of these islands to something identifiable, do something else. it would make for a more memorable experience. What if you don't want to do Like, say PBE the ice islands. level has all ice enemies, and not only that, but there are also these flash blizzards that give you a stacking debuff. I think Blizzard, Blizzard makes a mistake by always answering, but what if you don't want to do this? And then they have some other sort of alternative for people to play the game in their own like super specific niche and then people become so far disconnected from each other that nobody interacts with anything and you need to create like eight different types of game modes that are all self-serving and self-perpetuating in order to make everybody and like all these tiny little micro interest groups in the game happy and then any decision that you make makes seven groups mad and one group happy so you're just rotating who gets mad and who gets happy like it, it just like, you should have to play the entire fucking game. PvP is part of the game. I don't think that, like, you should be forced into PvP, but the idea that PvP should have some form of, like, like unique power progression and unique power that you get out of it is completely... I, I completely believe in that. I think that in Burning Crusade and Vanilla, they had that, and it was a great system. I'd like to see even more PvP stuff be added into the core game and people expecting to play PvP. I think that makes the game better. Even at the beginning of Legion, for, or sorry, BFA, for example, there was so much more PvP action because PvP was more lucrative in terms of gear. That's better for the game, I feel. That you have to get rid of by taking cover in a cave and kill less lucrative enemies inside, or you can risk it by finding materials to build a campfire that gives you a buff that lets you weather the storm for a bit. This like would Thorm. set it apart from the others, and at the same time, fix that problem of not really having any strategy other than rush rush rush. Maybe for the city map, the quirk is pickpockets will constantly spawn trying to Sorry. steal your Azerite. They don't attack you, they just wait until you're in combat or something, and they stealth up and steal a hundred or so Azerite and start running away. If you don't kill them within 10 seconds, they vanish along with that Azerite. Oh, like treasure goblins! Make each map a unique and memorable experience like this, okay. to where if you get it in the queue, you're like, oh cool, okay. it's this one. Okay. As for the reward structure, at first it was pretty poor. You either got doubloons, sometimes a pet, and sometimes nothing. 
a never just amount. Just an asteroid, which you can get from basically any other activity in the game. This is still largely the same, but they did add a vendor where you spend those doubloons for some goodies, finally adding some structure to the reward system and giving players long-term goals to work towards About instead damn of rolling time. the dice every run and praying to the RNG gods. And in regards to the balance and pace, to try and make people deviate from the rush 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 strategy, they have extraction points for you to defend, so there's actually a benefit in slowing down every once in a while and giving players decisions of attacking or defending. It, it's... They also have the new treasure map system, if you fill up your weekly bar, yeah, you get a I like this map, a lot, which unlocks a bonus table mission that can have azurite, amount, residuum, gold, and so on. Wait, what the fuck? You can get treasure maps for the mounts? Was that true? How rare are they? There are are they are they is it like a ten percent, like one percent, like what is it? Fuck dude. Very rare. Maybe I maybe it's just a waste of time. I should just keep running the, the dungeons on our own. Oh my god, dude. Shit. Chosen at random. I didn't even Again, know that. Again, an improvement, but at the end of the Fuck, day, man. it's just another random reward. Everything is so random these days. PvP gear, Titan forging, caches. What happened to this? I thought this was all right. Some randomness is good. As Me too. Your playability, but if your whole game is based off of caches and Titan forging, it tends to get a bit too grindy and frustrating if the RNG gods happen to have it out for you. Equipment caches the RNG have gods really are taken over the me game always. at this point, and I think they would benefit greatly from introducing a badge system similar to what they had in the Burning Crusade or Wrath of a the what? King Days. A but badge back on topic system? Here, island expeditions. What's that? Like I said, they're not bad. They're just not great either, at least in my opinion. Oh my god! I think if they made each map more unique and added more structure to the reward system, more people would run them. Moving on here though, another big feature are the Warfronts. Now, the actual gameplay of Warfronts isn't bad in my opinion. You collect resources, recruit troops, take capture points, and take down the enemy commander in a battle that's reminiscent of the old RTS games that we all know and love. Damn right. Gameplay wise, they're alright. My issue with them is the fact that you can't lose them, because what happens then is it just becomes a mindless zerg where if you do bad, it just takes longer to win. Yeah. In fact, it's, it's quite common to go a whole cares? round without anyone uttering a single word in raid chat because there's no need. You may as well be playing with bots. There's one time I did a warfront. I think it was, like, it was something that's like LFR. Or something. I don't know if it was warfront. Somebody started talking. We kicked them. We don't need that. Just play the fucking game. Just, yeah, kick them out. <laughs> What's the point of playing any game if you can't possibly lose? You ever see that Twilight Zone episode where the guy thinks he's in heaven because he never loses and everything goes his way? Red. Rocky is hot tonight, am I right, Money, fame, and women. He has it all. But after a few months of this, he finds out that it's actually hell because his life becomes so boring. Oh, no, I mean it. I mean it. It's just somebody must have goofed. If I gotta stay here another day, I'm gonna go nuts! All of his whims and wishes are immediately satisfied, and there's no real challenge or thrill left in his life. I never gave you the idea you were in heaven, Mr. Valentine. This is the other place! In the case of Warfronts. Whoa, what the fuck? Yeah, Izzy and I, we watched like a show. It was called The the Good Place or something like that. I thought it was like this unique idea. They just took it from something else. 
Wait. Is there? Yeah, it, it. Yeah, there is no original text. There's no real obstacle to overcome wow. because eventually you'll win. In fact, there's a big problem with people just AFK. Oh, the that's whole me round. doing war fronts. You'll still win. Don't get me wrong. There but it is. It just takes a bit longer. To prove this, I did one whole round where I did nothing but jump. Okay, I, I'm sorry, I keep pausing. I, I, I want to stop pausing, but I want to show you guys one thing that's really important that you need to know about Warfronts. So, obviously, you queue into a Warfront and you don't want to do anything because it's a waste of time and everybody else can just do it for you. Nobody wants to ever play a Warfront. Here's what you need to do. Go ahead and wait for a Siege Vehicle to spawn and then move your character inside the Siege Vehicle to where nobody can actually see your character or target your character because the Siege Vehicle is on top of it and nobody will be able to tell that you're AFK for the whole time. And even if they try to right click your name on the, uh, on the map, it makes it more difficult because they keep clicking on the siege vehicle. So this is a way for you to basically guarantee that you won't get kicked out of a warfront for being AFK while still AFK in the warfront. And yeah, they can see you on the map, but like they don't really tell, they, they can't tell like, oh, like no, maybe he's with the siege vehicles. Like, trust me, like I AFK next to the siege vehicles or inside of them every single time. It's a great method, and it always works. I was never called out, and I was never kicked. What I was going to do slash target? Oh, they can figure it no out. No one noticed, it's, and it's, it's we won anyways. It's about making it harder for them to do. I do feel a bit bad about Obviously, it. Obviously, yeah, they can figure it out. it brings to light their biggest issue, and that's the fact that they need to be losable. If there's no challenge, it's just a chore. You ever play with cheat codes in the old Final Fantasies back in the day? I still have you a max game out shark. your characters. They one shot everything. Yep. And you have all of the ultimate weapons. Yep. Every magic spell, and nothing can touch you. It's fun, right? Well, it's fun for about ten minutes until you realize you're just pressing buttons. There's no actual thought or decision making going on. A game isn't a game if there's no possible way that you can lose. So that's my main gripe with the Warfronts themselves. Their actual gameplay is all right. I just wish that there was some real opposition, and I think they'd be way more fun if you- Y'all imagine if you had Horde Warfronts, like Horde versus Alliance Warfronts, and you killed them, and then you got their lumber and their and, and their, their steel, and you'd take it back to your base, and you would fucking build siege vehicles and stuff, and then you'd go and, like, assault their base and stuff. Oh, it'd be so fucking good, dude. Like, here's the thing that's so crazy. is like, WoW has, like, they have all these features. And, like, I, I it, it's crazy to me- like, maybe I'm just being naive and, uh, I, what's the word, like, uh, arrogant. But it seems like so many people have, like, all these, like, really, really great ideas for the game. And we keep getting shit like Warfronts. Like, what's going on? I actually had to plan things out and formulate a strategy rather than it's just mindless zerging. Yeah, and it was love. It just begs to have a PvP option available. The expansion's whole focus is Alliance versus Horde. So let us kill some actual players, and at the same time, bring in that danger of losing. I would love to it's see two that. birds with one stone. I'm curious to see how heroic Warfront's going to go. There are issues outside of them right now as well. This has been approved a bit in 8.1 with the addition of the Darkshore Warfront, but by themselves, has they're 75% really in action and just waiting for them to start, yep. which also ties into how they were released. For those who don't know, the Warfronts work in stages of four, the Alliance controls the keep, and the Horde gathers resources to launch an attack, and once they finish that, they can do the actual scenario for one week. They're successful, so they take it, and now the Alliance gathers resources, and then finally, the Alliance can do the scenario. If you're only- I think- Yo guys, you like- you like- you like it whenever I- I pause? I hope so. So, um, anyway, what I pause there for- is that I think that the metaphor for the way that your resource contributions help the Warfront work faster is probably the best metaphor that you can have for BFA, right? Is that you have this quest that you're turning in to put resources in to advance an effort, but the effort is already on a pre-constructed timetable that you have no real control over. So the player contributing the resources really makes no no impact whatsoever, even though the system and everything in the game is constructed in a way to make the player think that they are. 
playing one faction for three of these four stages, you're just looking at progress bars. The scenario is playable for a week, like once a month. And yeah, I know about the benefits of controlling the keep, but the actual warfront is what we're all interested in. The world boss, rares, and turn-ins are all stuff we've seen for 14 years. From a pure gameplay standpoint, we care about the actual scenario where you gather resources and take bases. So when BFA released and we only had one, it was so slow moving that it took months before the Alliance could even do the scenario since the Horde started in that phase. Horde For favoritism. a feature that was advertised and hyped up as one of the main things in Blizzard Look at the girl. Oh, it just wow. seems wrong that it took a couple of months oh. before one side even got to see it. Ooh. And a problem that made it even worse was the fact that they were unlocked on the 4th of September, which was the 4th week of the expansion. In my opinion, they should have come out after the first week of the expansion at the very latest, considering how slow moving they are. True. Now, they said that the reason for why they're so slow is eventually they're going to have multiple war fronts, so there won't be such a huge gap. We need to have three war fronts now, at a time. But back then, they should have accounted for that. Up They'll probably until add that one, second war front like after got a released, shower. I thought that they should have sped up the rate at which the non war front stages progress, so you're not just waiting for 75% of the time. The first month of any expansion is crucial, and you gotta blow people away to get them to stick around, and they kind of dropped the ball in regards to warfronts. But here comes 8.1. We got the Battle for Darkshore, which is a whole new warfront that runs concurrently with the Battle for Stromgarde, thus solving that issue of them being slow moving and 75% in action. And in 8.2, we're getting a heroic mode that'll be much more difficult than normal warfronts, Yep. And hey, they're even losable. A losable game mode? That's crazy talk. Wow. I'm still wanting I'm, a PvP mode. I, I'm really hey, looking forward these to are that. Good changes it's going to be fucking that amazing. Pretty much every issue that I have with Warfronts. Like, I, I really, really want to try these out. another point. For all of these features, I've said that, oh, they improved this in 8.1, or they're going to add this aspect in 8.2. Yeah, Baron's Warfront would be good, yeah. That's all well and good, but let's talk about the here and now. 8.1 okay. was released four months after BFA's launch. Just in and time. And Heroic Mode is 8.2, which who knows when that'll drop. Probably As like, players, we expect these features to be fully like tested late, I, I'd say and late optimized May. at release. Late not May, they'll bring it out. Not piece by piece in content patches. So, in the current game, with Azerite armor, island expeditions, and war fronts all having their flaws, BFA doesn't bring many new things to the table. People aren't as active in these game modes, and they regress to the barebones MMO gameplay, such as dungeons and raiding, and you're really left with a very similar experience to Legion. Your daily itinerary yeah, with is no world legendaries. questing, grinding loot from mythic keystones, and once a week raiding without raid sets. Oh and boy! If they happen to be your cup of tea, you have expeditions. I do a lot of expeditions. If they're up, that is. The story is gated. Look how many doubloons like I have. Legion, and in 8.1, we got 2, the new incursion feature, which is just like the demon invasions. From incursions Legion. are okay. I don't Zone mind comes them. comes under attack. You do four world quests, and then a finale. The expansions look almost identical in a lot of ways, and with how many new features Legion brought to the table, BFA seems kind of underwhelming for a lot of people in comparison right now. It is good that they've been addressing this stuff in these patches, but I think there are some little things that they could do as well. Only 2k? Go well, I spent way. like 2k as well. When was the last time I bought you saw a new row of talents? Was that in the Warlords of Draenor? The old trees, with how much people deride them, at least let you slowly improve and customize your character level by level. With Those monsters were the days. scaling with you as you level and no new talents, you have to ask yourself the question what's the actual point of leveling? Where it used to be its own journey, it's now just an obstacle to overcome to get to the end game and a vessel to force feed players the story of the expansion to s I, I think that leveling in Legion was fine. I, I didn't mind it. I thought leveling in WAD was great. Like all like leveling being boring and like a chore is like something that's really kind of unique to BFA. Like all of the other expansions, I, I feel like leveling has served a distinct purpose. Set the narrative. It's like I mentioned earlier. The smaller details by themselves may seem minor, but if you slowly chip away things, they add up. Adding another row of talents honestly isn't even a little thing. Class balance is never as simple as add more, but it would give us something that's long overdue and relieve some of the tremendous pressure from the back of the failing Azerite system. Listen, I don't pretend to have all the answers. 
I'm not a developer. I don't know what goes on behind the scenes, and there are probably very good reasons for a lot of these problems BFA is facing, but at the end of the day, problems are problems, and they still need fixing. Yeah. So, even through all of this, like I mentioned Arthur's at the beginning too. of the video, I'm enjoying the expansion for what it is. I think the stuff that it did well, they did really well. I'm pretty much addicted to the dungeons in BFA, and I'm always down to run some Mythic Plus. Even if I don't need them for gear or anything, I just like running them with my friends. I'm ah. loving the story, and the first two raids seem to have hit the mark. The fights have impeccable design and quality that only Blizzard can achieve. That's true, the raids ones are in great. Particular are Big Mother true. And Aldir, and either Mechatork or Jaina in Dazzara lore Big true. is hard for me to decide. And outside of that, I think their war mode was also a stroke of genius. I love war mode. I think it really revitalized PvP. Fuck yeah, dude. And the way they have the PvP It just didn't revitalize the servers. You gain some added power and experiment with the new perks, even out in the world just questing. PvP talent should really be enabled everywhere. Like I said, I haven't touched PvP really since Cataclysm. And in BFA, I find myself going out of my way to world PvP and even arena here and there. It adds a new danger to the otherwise mundane world questing and I've had a lot of fun and memorable battles against the Horde. And with the incursions sort of forcing everyone together, it makes for quite a hectic time. This is what they should do. They should have uh, war mode only world quests in the incursion zones, and if you get like 50 or 100 HKs in the zone, it completes the incursion without you having to do any of the quests, and it also gives you like 500 conquest. Or like, maybe like 500 would probably be too much, like, like 100 or something like that conquest. Like, there's plenty of different ways they can do it, and, like, war mode, like, they say they're going to fix it in 8.2, which is something, like, I'm really looking forward to that. I think war mode is amazing. Like, you guys see, or don't I have war mode on right now? Yeah, I do. I have war mode on all the time, uh, unless I'm streaming, right? Because, like, then people start attacking me all the time. But generally, I always have war mode on because that's the way that I feel like the game should be played. And I think Blizzard criminally underuses war mode, and uh, the incentivizations for it should be much grander than just a percentage buff to your your rewards that you don't really care about to get, to begin with. Like, imagine getting imagine getting excited about getting fifteen percent more war resources. I have a feeling that this video will get a lot of hate, and that's fine. Again, it's just all opinions. If you personally enjoy every aspect of BFA, more power to you. Like I said, overall, I like BFA and I still play it. It's just not as much as I would be since the issues I mentioned have put a damper on my experience personally. I don't want this video to give you the impression that it's worse than Draenor or the game is dying like many would have you believe. Listen, people have been saying that the game has been dying ever since the Burning Crusade. Some of you veterans may remember just how controversial that was. That's true, what actually. What the heck? You mean to tell me that all of the gear we worked two years That's for... That's why people didn't do Nax. That's 65? why so few people cleared Nax. What a rip-off. Is it in one of the gear shark validated. blizzard? You know, I hear that this new game called The Lord of the Rings Online is coming out. Everyone says it's going to be a WoW killer. Oh, so shit. I'll see you guys on the other side. Yeah, see you guys er, in Rivendell. Uh, I'm, I really meant Age of Conan there. I thought you meant or Rift. Or maybe Warhammer Online? No, no, no. I meant Star Wars The Old Republic. Oh, God. It seems like a hundred of these supposed WoW killers have come and gone, but through it all, the world of Warcraft always seems to pull through. That's true. We do still have a lot of time to spend with BFA, so I don't think anyone can conclusively say that it's good or bad yet. A lot can happen in two years, and although some of this stuff got off to a rocky start, I have faith that they can turn it around and make it into a great expansion. I really do. Hey, I played through all of Draenor. If that doesn't tell you how much love I have for this game, I don't know what will. I, I think did it too. all really hinges I on did how they address the Azerite armor system. Expeditions and warfronts are kind of tertiary at the end of the day if you think about it. They're just side activities to do when you're bored. Azerite armor, however, is so important because it's your character progression for the expansion. As I've said many times, character progression is so important well, for That's the animals. only thing that matters, is character progression. I really progression. can't say it enough. It's the reason why anyone does anything in the game, whether it be gearing up, Fuck yeah. getting those mounts, investing talent points, earning PvP rank, or whatever. If they can save this, I think they can save the expansion. 
But that's about it. Hopefully this video didn't come off as negative because that wasn't the goal. These are just my honest thoughts about a game as a player who's been playing since March of 2005. I've actually been working on this video for over a month trying to approach it from a calm and fair perspective and I'm hoping I did just that. Don't take it too seriously. You gotta live with that mindset. Opinions are like buttholes. Everyone has one. What a way to end a video. What a way to end a video, wow. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.